guys, welcome to The Beauty Dish, and welcome to Fragrance Friday. So today I am going to talk about what, at this moment in time, I would have to say is my very, very favorite fragrance, and that is Diorella. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, tell you what I smell, and compare the current version to the vintage version. Christian Dior's Diorella was released in 1972, and it was created by Edmund Rudnitska, who's one of those giants of 20th century perfumery. Um, he also created uh, Rocas Fam and other Dior classics, um, specifically Diorissimo, Diorama, Eau Sauvage, and others. The story also goes that Diorella was one of his very favorite creations. So Diorella would be classified as a floral chipra, but I also get so much fruitiness from the fragrance, this kind of sensation of honeydew melon, and that's not in the notes list, although I've seen the uh, melon described in um, various reviews for this fragrance, and it's one of the top notes um, that Fragrantica users pick out in Diorella. So it's a, it's a honeydew melon, or maybe a cantaloupe, but it's it's a little overripe. It's almost too ripe and too sweet and too intense to really want to eat, but I would eat it anyway. The top notes in Diorella are citrus and herbs, and I mostly get kind of a bitter lemon. Um, it's not the sort of zingy citrus that you kind of are squeezing into your cocktail. It's it's definitely not sweet and it's not bright and refreshing, but it's also not, you know, lemon pledge. It's it's very grounded by what's to come after. And as soon as those top notes kind of burn away, I'd say within 15 minutes, the funk really sets in. So our middle notes, we do have a lot of florals in there, but they're indolic florals. They're, they're sweet and warm and sexy, and there's jasmine and there's honeysuckle. And it's, it's very sensual, and you wouldn't really pick out individual flowers, especially in the vintage version. I have a hard time picking them out, but it all comes together, and those base notes then really creep up and kind of bolster those florals, and it all just becomes this wonderful, sexy, seductive, funky thing. So let me try to be a little more specific with that. <laughs> so for our base notes, we've got oak moss, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, musk, and clove, and really, those, those base notes, I think, are the main story, especially in the vintage version, and all those base notes that I just named really come into play in the vintage, so let me start talking about that a little more specifically. So while I definitely get a little funk in the current version, the vintage version could certainly be classified under skink, but it's a sexy skink. It's a good kind of a skink. So those bass notes are the big story, and they create this, this warm, sensual, animalic fragrance. And as it dries down, there are, there are moments when it's just delicious, sweaty skin. It's kind of post-roll-in-the-hay sort of skin. And the, the sweaty factor never gets too much. Um, it's really, I think it's really the clove that creates that feeling for me. And it's not as extreme as when you smell cumin in a fragrance, which really can give off a sweaty vibe, especially if there's a little too much of it. But here is the clove, and it's, it's a little spicy, sweaty, and it's all just very nice. But that doesn't overwhelm you. Sometimes you get more of that kind of prowling animal sensation. It's like it's like a kind of stray animal prowling through the back alley behind the Vietnamese restaurant and, you know, kicking his way through maybe maybe the rotten fruit, maybe the herbs that didn't get used that night, um, maybe a little fish sauce in the mix. Um, Tania Sanchez famously described Diorella in, um, in her book Perfumes the Guide as Vietnamese beef salad, and I don't get a whole lot of fish sauce, and I don't get as much herbs, but I can definitely see where she's coming from. It's not as funky as fish sauce, but that might lead you in the right direction. 
Um, on her blog, Yesterday's Perfume, Barbara Herman, who also has written a great book on vintage fragrances, I'll put links to the stuff I'm referring to below, she gets um, a sense of durian, which is that Southeast Asian fruit. And if you've ever been to Thailand, you'll just be walking around in some random place, in, in, in various places, and all of a sudden you'll just get a whiff of it. And it's this fruit that's so intense, so almost unctuously fatty and rich and sweet that it's totally repulsive and alluring all at the same time. People love it or hate it, but it provokes strong feelings. And although I don't smell the specific scent of durian in Diorella, I, if you've, if you've experienced that durian smell, you might, that might give you an idea of what, what Diorella can evoke. So, I guess to sum that up, it's not for everyone. Um, flowers and garbage is another way I've heard it described. Rotten fruit. Um, all of these things. And in my mind, none of those things are bad. A little rotten fruit in a fragrance, I think, is fantastic. And, yeah, kind of flowers that have gone, gone spoiled. And that's, that's that feeling that you get from this blend of um, amazing notes in Diorella. Especially in the vintage version, which I would say is just deeper and a more more complex, more voluminous. Um, it's more long lasting on my skin than the current version um, and it has it has a the weight of it is less sheer than the current version. Okay, now to talk more specifically about the current version. I just want to start by saying that I think the current version is excellent. Um, that's what I fell in love with first. That was my first sniff of Diorella. So in the top notes, you get a very similar sensation. Like today I put current and vintage on each arm and the very, those very first few minutes are very, very similar. Um, the current version, I think you get a greater sensation of the florals. So it's this honeysuckle accord and there's that jasmine in there and they're not quite as rotten, they're not quite as indolic, but they are very deep and rich and honey-like. And there's a base, if you just look at the Dior website for the notes, um, they don't list all the notes, and for the base note they say the main component is vetiver, and it's a very soft, warm, even slightly sweet, clean, feminine vetiver. So it's not that sometimes sharp or sour or harsh vetiver, it's very soft and warm. And so it creates a nice base, and it is blended up there with the flowers, so this doesn't smell like a straight out floral, but it's much cleaner, much less animalic and skanky, and like I said, it's, it's more sheer. Really my biggest gripe with the current version is that it's not as long lasting. Um, I, a few hours ago, maybe two hours ago, I put these on and it's, it's very faintly there. I get that sweet vetiver base, and you still get all that fantastic funk. There's still a nice rotten fruit flower thing going on there. It's just, where, whereas it gets deeper and deeper in the vintage, it doesn't take you all the way to the edge with the current version. But I, like, I don't want to poo-poo the current version. It is really, really nice. If only it lasted longer. Here's the thing though, I mean, it's really well priced. So go on the Saks website, um, a 3.4 ounce bottle, which is huge, is $98. You could spend two or three times that on a nice niche perfume. Um, you could easily spend more and you could do a lot worse. So that's my take on Christian Dior's Diorella. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you've tried this fragrance. A lot of you actually, when I showed it in my um, fragrance recent fragrance purchases video. A lot of you mentioned that you used to wear it or you knew someone who wore it or you, you loved it and I loved hearing from you. Um, this review was actually based on my vintage Diorella that I got on eBay and I believe it's from around 1987. Um, it still smells absolutely perfect. It's, it's wonderful. Um, and yeah, these are, these are available. If you, you know, you used to wear it and you were dying to get your hands on the vintage, watch eBay, um, estate sales, thrift stores, um, look out for it because apparently this fragrance isn't for everyone. Um, I actually, <laughs> I got this bottle for 50 on eBay, which was a bargain. I would say the going price for a 50 mil size bottle, which this is, is a hundred. Um, so I definitely lucked out, but 
I'd say it's well worth $100. So if you are, if you have the stomach to shop vintage on eBay, definitely look out for it. And then um, I had a little decant of the current eau de toilette of Diorella from uh, the perfumed court. So let me know what you think. Um, I've gotten some decants of, of other vintage Dior's because Dior is my brand. You know, I, <laughs> there's of like the classic perfume brands, Guerlain, Chanel, Dior is my brand. I just realized one day that there are so many Dior's that I love and not just the old stuff, the modern stuff. I somehow, Dior does it for me a lot of the time. So I'll start, I'll talk about that stuff, you know, as time goes on, but let me know if you have any questions and let me know if there's anything you want to see next. Um, I don't know. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a wonderful, fragrant day.